Mark meets Tristan Foley, the Executive Creative Director at The Dubs. Hi Tristan. Hi. Um, can you give us a quick summary of your career today? Uh, yeah, I started um, as a packing designer uh, in London in the mid-90s. I uh, worked for a company called Tutsals. Um, and and that was your first full-time job? It was my first full-time job straight out of college. What did um, you do at college? Um, I did a uh, high national diploma at the Somerset College of Arts and Technology down in Taunton um, and then did a packaging um, BA honours uh, degree course, well, an extra year I suppose. Um, and uh, that led me to some work experience at Tussles um, in London and from there I had the opportunity of getting a, a junior role at, at Tussles. Um, did you approach them directly? Uh, actually, Glenn Tutsell, who was the creative director of Tutsells, um, was a lecturer uh, at, at SCAT. Yes. So um, I think it was a good way for him to see up and coming pupil as you know, potential uh, talent in that way. So got the uh, opportunity to do some work experience, got off the job, um, and went straight from Somerset to Soho, uh, which was great. Um, and um, from there, uh, I did seven years at Tutsells uh, until it was bought by WPP. and dissolved, unfortunately. Um, I then had the opportunity uh, whilst working at Tutsals to work with um, another business called At WWW, uh, who are a digital agency based in uh, Sydney in London, um, who I went to work for down in Sydney as a kind of senior designer. Um, and that turned into creative director type role uh, at WWW, which was always a bit of a mouthful, became the dubs, which is where I am to date. Ah, okay. Um, and why, why Sydney? Why did, why did you make the move out there? Um, well, I liked working in a small agency when uh, the Tussles was taken over by WPP. It was merged with Enterprise IG. Um, I got shifted down to um, Richmond to work in one of their offices down there. Um, I lived in Old Street. It was a bit of a commute. And yeah. I went from an office of you know, 10 or 15 people to a, you know, hundreds. And it, it just wasn't the kind of fit to the, how I wanted to work in a, in a small agency. So. Whilst working with the, the dubs um, and outsourcing to them for kind of technical um, execution type stuff, um, their MD, uh, Josh Frith, said, oh, there's a role down in Sydney if you fancy uh, a bit of a sea change. I'd never been to Australia, but I thought, yeah, okay, give it a go. And um, I did 10 years in Sydney um, until I came back here six months ago. Cool, so tell us a bit about the dubs. How, how do you market yourselves in the industry? Well, we've been around since 96. In 96, when we were at WWW, it was very much a technology business, you know, the incept of the, um, of the internet. It was all content management systems, HTML, you know, um, development and, and building websites, you know. I came on board in 2003, um, and my branding, packaging, you know, background really was much more around the kind of creative approach to how you solve you know, problems for, for brands, for their customers, their clients. Um, and so I started to move the agency away from a, um, a technical cell, you know, we can build you this, to um, a much more creative one. Um, in probably the last five years with the advent of social media and just how audiences are fragmenting um, and how they consume content and engage with brands, um, we've taken a more strategic kind of approach to um, kind of thinking about what audiences need, how are they interacting with that content, you know, Google, YouTube, Netflix, whatever, um, and therefore a kind of creative approach has led us down into social content um, and really kind of looking at how um, audiences interact across any type of platform in that way. When you left college and you were, I guess, only skilled in uh, branding and packaging, did you ever see your career, end, not ending, but where it is today, where it's quite digitally focused? I mean, it was an interesting one. My dad worked for the BBC as a, as a lighting director, so I was always kind of interested in kind of motion graphics and, and working in, in that kind of motion space. Um, oddly, I did a degree in packaging and, and you know, it didn't, uh, it didn't transpire that I worked in that way. When I went to Tutsal's, Tutsal's sister agency was Laminaire. Uh, Laminaire obviously is one of the leading kind of motion graphics, TV ident type businesses. So that kind of stuff could kind of get me a bit more immersed, I suppose, in, in, in seeing that world. Um, as a branding agency, we like to believe that we could do anything for our, our, brand, our clients. So therefore, when in the kind of late 90s and kind of early 2000s, opportunities start talking about the internet, websites, and so on occurred, 
obviously we stuck our hand up and said, yeah, we can do that for you, right. pretty much knowing nothing about how to build websites or design for websites and so on. But um, as a business, we, we had a few clients that we did that. And my role probably at the end of my time at Tupsource became more of a kind of digital designer. And I took on some of the, the ideas that could be well, multimedia and print design about them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so be that CD ROMs and, and things like that. So the transition to the dubs was I was working with the dubs whilst the Tutsals to execute HTML and, and do the build of those sorts of ideas that we had. Right, okay. um, so it was a big change, to be honest, you know, not only moving from London down to Sydney, but also moving completely away from any sort of environment where, um, you know, to be honest, the kind of um, you know, the importance of the big idea, typography, you know, quality created and so on, you get into the world of HTML and CSS and, you know, line spacing, not leading, you know, letter spacing, not kerning. It's, it, it was a challenge to try and get that business, you know, as in the people in the dubs, but also clients when thinking about digital to still apply the same kind of design principles that you have for packaging. What advice would you give to people who are these days graduating in branding, design and maybe packaging courses um, who maybe feel that that's the only route for them? To get into digital, that that's the only route? Maybe, or, or that their skill sets are transferable into other... Look, I've always felt that whoever, whatever medium you're dealing with, you're always dealing with, say it's you know Coke or whatever, it's the brand and that brand has an audience and that audience interacts with that same brand um, via printed medium, TV, web, digital, you know, social, whatever, in the same way. If you have the same principles about why you're doing what you're doing, what's the audience need out of this, what's the solution that actually meets um, the goals of the business and, and, and the audience, then they're transferable skills. I find that, um, you know, we've recently recruited for kind of a junior role here, graduate role, and we have a design internship program kind of running, that, um, to be honest, an open mind is really important, I find, you know, that people coming in believing that they, they know what they're doing, that they have the answer, um, doesn't really doesn't really cut it. I mean, I remember when I was 23 and probably thought I knew everything, and you know nothing, so go into it in a kind of, with a humbleness, I think is really important. Yeah, so it sounds like when you first joined uh, at WWW, you were one of the only few non-digital uh, kind of people at the time, or multimedia people at the time, uh, Obviously, the dubs today are quite digitally and social media led as an agency. Um, if someone approaches you without real commercial experience within digital, how kind of seriously would you take their application versus someone who, uh, who has some commercial agency digital experience? Oddly, we, we quite like the idea of not seeking people from that digital background, um, especially potentially in Australia. We found that people who are trained as digital designers, for instance, through college and maybe even kind of, um, you know, through the first few years of their kind of career working in a digital agency, I take a very digital approach to everything. You know, things are quite kind of pixel oriented, you know. Um, for instance, our creative director here um, is the ex-commissioning editor of ITV um, and BBC. So very much a programming kind of background in that way. Uh, my background's packaging, you know. Um, so, really, it's, it's not about being digital. Understanding the platforms, you're understanding, you know, what it means to you as an individual and the life that you lead is important. But um, I think it's much more important to be um, a professional in how you present yourself, um, be able to articulate um, your ideas, I think is really important. Um, and what, what does having an understanding of the platforms mean to you? Does it mean you need to have a Facebook account to be able to design and come up with an idea on Facebook? Less, no, no, I don't think so. I think there's in two parts. One in regards to how you present yourself as, a, as an individual. So as a graduate coming out there, something like the LinkedIn profile is really important. Understanding as you're marketing yourself to your audience and the audience being agencies and, uh, and so on to find a job, um, recognizing what, what we do ourselves and how we present ourselves. So I have an up-to-date LinkedIn profile. I use that in a way to professionally connect with my clients. Um, and I understand how my personal persona in the, in the world out there reflects who I am. So I'll often get CVs in, check them out on Facebook, and there's a silly picture or they don't have their privacy settings set up properly so they can't see all their photos. You kind of think, you're not getting this, you know? And 
Yeah. See, this is really interesting. So, I've had this conversation with a lot of people recently about their digital footprint and that they uh, need to be aware of how they're being perceived online, um, as well as obviously when they're kind of face to face, and particularly when you're looking uh, for a job. Um, do you actually do kind of social media checks on people before hiring them to see what kind of person they are, what they get up to? You have to be. You have to recognise as, as an employee that you're you're reflecting the business that you work for. So you know the the quick and easy checks. You know LinkedIn profile, Facebook page, Twitter profile, that sort of stuff. You know it takes five minutes. Um, the first thing you can check is just how exposed are they themselves. You know. Um, they're putting simple things up like their full name, their date of birth, you know, um, you know, conversations with their mother that shows their, their mother's maiden name, and all those sorts of things. Um, certainly goes to say, do you even get this world that we live in, this digital world that we live in? Um, and, you know, are you representing yourself professionally and properly, you know? And I find that a lot of things that, that disappoint me as graduates are leaving college is that the colleges don't seem to be schooling them up on those sorts of things, you know, I mean, we all had kind of interview techniques and how you should present yourself and so on, and to be honest, I'm old school, I want a printed portfolio, I want someone who would turn up and present work, you know, in front of me, I present work to my clients in the printed form, I mean, we're a digital agency, I still print out what I take, I take boards with me, because it's, it's an intimate way of presenting. See, you know? that's where it becomes subjective, because as a neutral kind of recruitment consultant within the digital space, uh, a lot of other businesses prefer to see digital work in its environment and see how they can interact with it. I don't mind an online portfolio. That's that's fine, you know. And it's, it gives you a kind of you know an overview of who these people are, and you know before you as you're kind of vetting people. But when they turn up for an interview, I think it's important to see how they present their ideas. You know, I mean, Glenn Tutts have always sold on me. It's, it's the idea. The big idea is what what wins the day. You know. And if you can't articulate and actually kind of, you know, make me believe in what you're selling, um, you know, then you, you failed. It could be the best idea in the world if you can't deliver it. And is that an expectation you have from a kind of entry level here all the way through? Look, you definitely know that people who are graduates or, or um, have been in the business for a couple of years haven't got the same kind of client experience, the same presentation experience as much older people. But being able to just articulate, you know, um, what they believe in, you know, what they're passionate about, I think they're really important. You see through bad design, you see through bad layout, uh, and often you'll just see one or two little gems in there. But it's more about an attitude, I think, than going to, to an interview. The online portfolio is fine, but I have people turn up for interviews who say, so we go, okay, can we see your work? And they look at you and say, well, well have you not bought a laptop? Or can you not open up the internet for me on, on your screen or whatever? And I think, if I just said, no, I, I, I don't have a laptop, I, I can't, you know. End of interview. Yeah, yeah, what do I then see, you know? Um, I've had enough client meetings where I've turned up if I am presenting, you know, laptops or whatever, failures of projectors to work and so on. I'm a technical business that, that likes to be as non-technical as possible. And I, and I still feel that there's, a, there's that intimacy when you're presenting work in a close way. If people are looking up at screens 15 feet away, they're not, they're not looking at you. Um, and therefore, then you're not building that bond. So it's the kind of small things that like that that has really nothing to do with the work. If you can see people who are articulate and passionate, have shown a, an understanding of the, the world that we live in and aren't stupid enough to put, you know, pictures of them half naked on Facebook and then wonder why when I look at that I, I don't think well of them, um, you know, and they can present themselves in a, in a simple and honest and passionate way, they're probably going to job. Have, you, have there been many situations where you haven't hired someone because you felt that they weren't portraying themselves well on social media? I've, I've had situations where, you know, through that kind of culling process, you know, through that first round, you know, you might get 50 CVs in or something for a position, um, there'll be an early cull. I mean, unless something really stands out that says, okay, they're a bit of an idiot online here, but my God, they've got some great stuff in their portfolio. I hate my boss, I've had the worst day at work today, but they've got a lovely portfolio. Yeah, I, I, I'm always baffled by people are posting stuff, um, you know, the, either the privacy, privacy settings not being appropriate, they're letting everybody see, or they friend people who are friends of friends of mine kind of thing, and you know, it, be professional, I think is the most important thing, and in this world of social media, that means you have to recognise where your private life and your business life intersect, and if 
the crossover too much, then it has, an, it has an, a, a, an effect on opportunities you might be given. And, and I guess that's why a lot of people put on their Twitter profiles that uh, all opinions are their own as opposed to the companies they work for. Yeah, I mean, you know, from kind of le like legal regulations and so on, I think it's important they do that. But, I mean, I work with a lot of finance institutions who have HR policies that are now really starting to struggle with how do you bring social media, you know, um, conversation that is a very much personal level from an employee perspective in line with the, the broader business social media policy that they might have. So, you know, how even if they're not talking about the brand that they work for, if they, you know, their paper might not even say that they work for that, that, uh, that business, they go and start saying things, if it's defamatory or racism or, or, or whatever it might be, um, that causes issues for brands. And I think people have to just recognise that the personal and business do intersect. And, you know... A recent case study is HMV, I guess. You know, it's, it, there's so many that out there of people doing kind of silly things. Um, and thinking that the things don't connect. You know, it's not hard to do a simple search on somebody to find, you know, they're on Twitter and they said that, but hold on, here's their LinkedIn profile, and then there's who they work for. And the brand knows that that connection can be easily made by the media and, and so on. Um, best to be sensible, best not to, um, you know, get yourself into those situations. And the businesses themselves are producing HR policies that say, this is not, you can't do that. Um, that changes the landscape of how uh, what, what people um, so believe is an intrusion on their own privacy by the businesses they work for. You know, agency like ours is pretty relaxed. You know, you're working for a, a major financial organisation. It's going to be very different. You know, yeah. um, but there's an awful lot out there that you see of people who are, you know, in their personal lives, saying and doing whatever they they want to say and do, not believing it's going to have an impact on their professional career. So, but so it does. corporate social responsibility is a talking point which seems to be getting. Uh, a lot more attention as, uh, because of silly things that happen to other companies. Where do you see, how far do you see corporate social responsibility for brands going? In, in regards, Does it get to a point where no one has an, opi an individual opinion anymore or how do you manage it? It's a difficult one definitely. I mean I think um, it has to be appropriate for the, the type of business we're talking about, you know, businesses that are very risk averse like banks. Are going to take a, probably a much stricter policy than, you know, a digital agency who, uh, you know, traditionally would be fairly kind of easy going. If you looked at our own Facebook page, it's it's fairly happy go lucky, you know. Um, so I think um, it does depend on where you work and the industry you're in. Um, and I think you have to probably recognise that some of the strictures that occur traditionally anyway in those sorts of industries, you know, heavy NDAs and so on, that would just restrict um, the conversations you can have in traditional media or spoken word and so on, are now also yeah. flown across into social media. Social media is not a kind of little kind of silo in its own right. Um, it's a decision you probably have to make in your career, in your personality, to say, um, if I'm going to work in a place like a bank, I have to expect that probably my opinions have to be somewhat more locked down than if I'm in a more carefree industry. It's a tough one, isn't it? Because I guess where second screen comes into play and, and you're allowed to uh, interact with programs you're watching on TV in your spare time, things like X Factor, where you, it's there to voice your opinion. Mm. Uh, yeah, I guess you have to be a lot more responsible. I think it's, you know, voicing your opinion could still be done in a sensible and, you know, uh, uh, in, a, in a way that isn't, you know, antagonistic or, you know, deflammatory or libelous or, or whatever else, you know, sensible commentary is absolutely fine, you know. So, but as I say, it's courses for courses for the business you might work in and, and who as, you, as an individual you, you, you feel you want to be, you know. How, how far back do you take it? Because if there's someone yeah. uh, that three or four years ago said something which is still searchable, still trackable, uh, and that's associated with their digital footprint, where do you kind of draw a line and say, okay, well, I don't agree with that, that but that was a few years ago. This is the kind of person I are now. I think um, you, you, you just have to judge that for yourself, you know. I, mean, I think if, if it's at a business level, the problem just comes down to kind of contractually what was what, what contract were they under at that point from a recruitment perspective and looking at new people, you know. Um, or if they, let's say, their entry, they're going for their first job, but when they were slightly more, slightly less mature, they were 18... 17, 18 years old and they had an opinion about something, does that not necessarily count? I, I think you, 
you, you take it for what it probably is, you know. Um, you know, I think it's um, it's understood at that time they weren't seeking, they weren't in their professional career, you know, that they, they weren't trying to um, establish themselves in that way. So, you know, you give the benefit of that, you know. I think, uh, yeah, permanency obviously does exist. You can always find stuff, you know, even if they think it's been deleted and so on. So, I think, um, you know, but I'm not too hard and fast on that. I just think that, you know, as they're moving into that professional career, they're going to be representing themselves, the brands, the businesses they work for, and the brands that they are doing business with. It's time to change. Before we move on to a quick fire round, um, what's the future for, for Dubs? Look, I think it's, it's, we're in an interesting place. I mean, we, we work in the finance industry predominantly, um, and the finance industry is going through change in regards to kind of risk and, and so on. Um, I think marketing in general, especially uh, kind of consumer marketing, is changing. You know, we're seeing the landscape of where social media comes into play, alternative broadcast through things like Netflix and stuff comes into play. Um, we're really working with our brands to look at how they can take traditional marketing dollars, pounds, sorry, we're in the UK now, aren't we? Um, and, um, and look and see where audience is shifting to, you know, I mean, I'm a big gamer and PlayStation 4 got announced a couple of days ago, you know, it's, it's again, it's, it's that smart TVs, you know, looking at what kind of YouTube is doing in regards to, you know, subscription content. So do you adapt around those things or do you try and stay ahead of them? Look, I think knowing where the future lies is, is, is important, you know, but actually a lot of the businesses we work for aren't looking for bleeding edge, you know, they're looking for um, a kind of risk averse environment. I'm still talking to, to, to banks about um, how to break into social media, you know, governance policies around, you know, crisis management and, and that sort of thing, you know, the most basic thing before even the designer they're going to post a tweet yeah. or, you know, uh, put a video up on YouTube, you know. So to decide how actually they, they shift their business model away from traditional advertising, the print and TV and all those sorts of things, it, it's a long way away still. Um, as much as, you know, there are brands doing some really innovative things and looking at what is happening with kind of broadcast through channels like Netflix and so on, sure, but it's it's a slow moving kind of change in my opinion. Okay, let's move on to a quick fire round. Can Lion or DNA D pencil? Uh, pencil. Olympic gold medal or an Oscar? Olympic gold medal. The brightest person you've worked with? Um, oh, that's a good one. Um, I'd have to say Glenn Tutsel. The most creative person you've worked with? Um, Jack Gardner, who was my um, lecturer at um, SCAM. The best looking person you've worked with? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, that's a difficult one. Um, oh, I don't know. Me, I would say. Good answer. Probably always a good answer. Creatives or suits? Creatives. Money or happiness? Happiness. Apple or Android? Apple. Although possibly soon to be Android. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Degree or no degree? Uh, no degree. Retained work or pitch work? Retained. Facebook or Twitter? Neither. Ant or deck? <laughs> and interesting. I thought you were going to go with neither for that. But. <laughs> well, you know, I've been away for ten years. I still have kind of an appreciation for them. It'll, it'll wear thin soon. When you've missed out ten years of pain, web, yeah. web or mobile? Mobile. Independent agencies or networked agencies? Independent. Outsourced production or on-site production? Mm, a bit of both, but I'm very into what's outsourced. Don Draper or Roger Sterling? Well, I'll not be a fan of Mad Men, but I'll say Draper. And lastly, twist or stick? Twist. Thank you very much. Thank you.